Hello, everybody. My name is Lynette. I am a co-founder of Natural Machines, and this is my co-founder, Emilio. Before we talk about anything else, I'm just going to address this in the room, since everybody will look at it instead of me, unless I talk about it first. So this is Fudini, our 3D food printer. And to give you a little bit of background as to why we're here, uh, why you should bother spending 15 minutes of your time with us, this is just a little bit of a, some of the awards we've won in the past three years since we've been building and developing and improving the market for Fudini. We've been very proud to receive over 15 awards and recognitions. So we are uh, stated as being the incredible food innovation that will change lives, one of the 10 best 3D printers, a food technology startup to watch, and a top emerging health and wellness startup. We've been covered by the press worldwide repeatedly, and we're very proud to have headlines such as this from the Washington Post, which calls Houdini the one device that will change how we cook forever, and Mashable, which calls Houdini an ingenious gadget that will automatically upgrade your kitchen. So the theme of today is from novelty to need it with 3D printers. But we find that today, it's more of a question. People ask, is it just a novelty? Or can it really be needed? Well, what can you do with 3D food printers? Of course, you can print shapes in fun different, fun different shapes. You can do a lot of different designs with 3D food printing. But when people think of, do we need it, they start to think of space. You know, does NASA need it? Do we need it to get to Mars? The astronauts might need it. And, that's all true, that's all being worked on. Or people might think, well, maybe food of the future will become obsolete, we'll start 3D printing things that look like this, or get away from real food. We don't believe that. We actually like real food. So the reason why we did 3D food printing in the first place is to get people back into their kitchens cooking with fresh, real ingredients. So we believe that in the next 10 to 15 years, 3D food printers will become a common kitchen appliance, like a microwave is a common kitchen appliance today, or an oven. You're not surprised to see these appliances when you walk into a kitchen. So we believe that they will be in both professional and home kitchens. So let's start with the professionals first. Why would professional kitchen users be interested in 3D food printing? Well, for one, it allows them to do shapes that just are not possible by hand. Chefs are always trying to be creative and reinvigorate their dishes and put out new things. So a 3D food printer, it's a kitchen appliance. It's a tool to help them create designs that they could not do before. Another big reason why chefs are interested in 3D food printing is because it automates certain things. This is a dish from a two-star Michelin-starred chef entitled Sea Coral. So to do this dish for 80 people sitting at a restaurant for dinner would be quite time intensive. But with Fudini, a 3D food printer, you can actually automate that process and do designs very quickly and very accurately. And I would beg to say that shapes are very important. So are shape, is shaping novelty? Perhaps. But shapes are important in food. Think about when you go out to eat or when you see food. You look at the presentation of that food. It impacts what you think about it before you even taste it. So we eat with our eyes as much as our mouths. So shaping is important, not only for adults, but for kids as well. I like to show this photo a lot because it's a spinach quiche in the shape of dinosaurs. I have two kids at home. They won't touch spinach quiche in a normal shape. But I take the same exact recipe with same exact fresh ingredients, print it in the shape of a dinosaur, and my dinosaurs become extinct very quickly. They can't get enough of them. So shaping is very important. It's not just a novelty. But let's talk about why consumers or home kitchen users would really be interested in 3D food printing. What can we do that makes 3D food printing really a necessity? Well, take a walk down to any supermarket or any place that sells food. We're overwhelmed with the amount of processed, pre-made, and packaged food from food manufacturers. And when you take a look at those labels, there's a lot of questions. What's in those boxes and packages? There's a lot of additives, preservatives, chemical sounding ingredient names. Sometimes we don't know what we're eating. And even with the new clean labeling coming out where you do understand all the ingredient names, what you might not know, or what you don't know actually, is you don't know how much things are in those packages, how many of that ingredient. So typically we eat way too many things like salt, oil, and sugar because they also act as shelf stabilizers for that product to sit on the supermarket for so long. 
So take a basic example of crackers. This is more of a two-dimensional example than three-dimensional, but 3D food printing is very versatile. So you can find an entire aisle of crackers in a supermarket, but a lot of them have too much salt, too much oil, palm oils, oils that aren't good for you, too much chemical preservatives in them. So I have yet to find a box of crackers that I'm happy with to serve my kids that are really fresh. I can make any recipe of crackers that I want. I can customize it to my own taste. I like them spicy, my kids do not. And I can make them fresh really easy without having to flour a work surface, roll out dough, get it really thin, and making it a mess in my kitchen. I simply make the dough, I put it into a food capsule, and I load it into Foodini and print. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, maybe you're a healthy eater and you don't need 3D food printing, you don't really use packaged food too much. Well, this is an example of my lunch one day. So I like to think I eat pretty healthy as well. This looks pretty healthy, doesn't it? Lettuce, tomato, rice, and a whole wheat wrap. But let's take a closer look at that whole wheat wrap, which I bought. It has how many additives in it? It's only a whole wheat wrap. There's nine additives and preservatives classified in three different categories. We have preservatives, we have emulsifiers, or stabilizers, thickeners, gelling agents, and the mysterious others category that I have no idea what that is. A whole wheat wrap is very easy to make. It's whole wheat flour, it's water, some salt and some spices, that's it. The pain point of making that whole wheat wrap yourself is that you have to clean your work surface, flour it, roll it out really thin, you're probably gonna use too much flour because the dough is sticky, so you don't want it sticking to your rolling pin, and then it's not good because you use too much flour. It's too much effort. But with a 3D food printer, you can simply take dough, put it in the capsule, you have a whole wheat wrap print and freshly ready-made, none of these additives and preservatives. So you might be sitting there thinking, well, I, I won't eat 3D printed food. If you eat anything from a food manufacturer, you practically already are. Because what a food manufacturer does is they take food, they push it through machines, they shape it and they form it. What we've done is taken that exact same concept and we've shrunk it down to a design kitchen appliance that sits on your kitchen counter. But the big difference is that you can actually use your own fresh, real ingredients because we ship with empty stainless steel food capsules. We will never force people to buy pre-filled food capsules. So this is about eating real food. But maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, how does it taste? It's going through a 3D food printer. I have a short one minute video that shows what happens when film crews take our product, our food, out into the streets for taste testing. We put it to the test. Anyone, 3D printed cookies, get them right here. This has come out of a printer and it's edible? It's been printed out? But how is it done? It's good. It tastes like a normal cookie. It's good. It can't be from a printer. It's really good. Some, the idea is perhaps a little too radical. No? <laughs> no, thank you. It's from a printer? No, I don't trust it. Super rica. It tastes super delicious. It's really good. It's great. The shapes are imaginative. Tasty. Really tasty. What? That's cool. That's awesome. Now you might be sitting there thinking, oh, I edited out all the bad parts. There were bad tastings. I can tell you there were not. This is not, I didn't edit out any bad parts. The only bad reactions you saw were when people heard that the food was 3D printed before they actually tried it. But once everybody tried our 3D printed food made with fresh real ingredients, all reservations about 3D food printing disappeared. But it's not just a 3D food printer, and here's where things get even more interesting. With Foodini, Foodini is an Internet of Things appliance. It's a connected kitchen appliance. So that allows you to do a lot of cool things. So notice how I say it's a kitchen appliance more so than a 3D printer, because that's what it is. It needs to be easy to use like any other kitchen appliance. So we made software that makes it really easy for anybody to create their own shapes and their own dishes. And since all that software resides in the cloud, 
You do not have to stand in the kitchen standing over your foodini programming it or designing dishes. You can do everything really easy from the comfort of your sofa if you wanted to plan your dinner. So what can you do with Internet of Things and 3D printing and sensors within Foodini? Well, I can do things like print a dessert that stops once it hits 150 calories because we know what ingredient we're printing. This video is going very slow, I promise you. It's much faster. It just happens to be slow on this presentation for some reason. What else can you do with uh, the Internet of Things and 3D printing. Well, we can open up the system with APIs so that it can integrate with other types of things, such as wearables. Wearables are getting much smarter. In the future, they're going to know what nutrients you're de deficit in at any particular time. So let's say you go for a run this evening. Your wearable knows you went for a 10K run. Very good. You can actually have a dinner that's freshly printed and has additional nutrients that you need after your run. So we can do customized food with 3D food printing and customizing all that with the IoT services. Now, I know I'm at risk for showing a 3D printed pizza in Italy tonight. However, I can tell you that this is all real dough and real sauce. What we do is we recommend that you print the dough and the sauce because those are the two hardest things to make by hand. We're not looking to uh, eliminate pizzerias or people who make pizzas fresh by hand. But we get questions, well, why would you print a pizza? It doesn't make any sense. It's easy to do. So our reaction to that is if it was so easy to do, then why is there an entire aisle dedicated in the supermarkets for pre-made pizza crust or frozen pizza or similar things? It's not easy for everybody. So we're not looking to replicate or re replace professional chefs. Again, this is a tool to help people get back in the kitchens and do their own cooking with fresh, real ingredients. So I would beg to say that it's not novelty to need it, or is it a novelty or is it need it? I think that 3D food printing is a novelty and need it. You can do novel things like print logos in mashed potato. <laughs> so you can do different types of plate designs. But 3D food printing is also need it because we need to get back to eating real food. We're a time for society. We don't have time to make a lot of things ourselves. But with 3D food printing combined with the Internet of Things, we can actually get people back into their kitchens cooking with fresh, real ingredients. Because at the end of the day, this is real food. 3D print it. Thank you.